the, uh, the theme, Thy Kingdom Come. And that's the idea that uh, God is the king, and as his subjects, we need to be uh, participating in his, his kingdom. We need to be subject uh, to our king. And uh, we saw a few weeks ago in Matthew chapter 5 that one of his purposes for us is that we be salt and light, our testimony to a lost world. Uh, we need to be different than the world. Uh, the Bible says that uh, we're the light of the world, and uh, we need to be able to, uh, to be representing our king uh, to a lost world. Well, another part of our purpose for the Lord is that we minister to each other. And that's what we're going to look at this morning in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let me start reading in verse 4. 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 4. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time used we flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness, nor of men sought we glory, neither of you nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you were dear unto us. For you remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. As you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children, that ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. we we'll just stop reading there. The main theme I'm taking in this passage is there in verse 12, that we would walk worthy, the worthy walk. And he says he's called us unto his kingdom and his glory. Uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And as Christians, we've recognized God is the king. You can have lots of conversations, you know, about the world. Listen, if, if a person doesn't recognize that this is God's world, they're not going to understand how it works. You know, I just had a conversation in the kitchen there. Oh, the world's too crowded. I said, have you gotten in a plane lately? It's mostly empty. <laughs> I, I don't know, you know. But if, if you don't have a godly philosophy, you're going to see people as a nuisance instead of people that God loves Amen. and people that need to be saved. Amen. Uh, God calls us to have a, a worthy walk. And it's not going to make sense if you haven't, first of all, recognized that God is the king, that Jesus is Lord. When he calls us to that, to, to walk worthy, you know, we, we read things in the scripture, and I don't know, uh, I read fiction, and uh, sometimes when I'm reading fiction, there's things I don't even bother to read, you know, somebody's name, if you would ask me how to say their name, I wouldn't know, it's just a, a, a word that I look at, and I'm afraid sometimes we do that with the Bible, <laughs> we read something, we think, oh, I don't know what that means, we just go on, well, what does that mean when he says that we're to walk worthy? I think he gives us a pretty good example here in the life of Paul as we read there in verses 4 through, through 12. Now, here's a man who recognized uh, the lordship of Jesus Christ. You know, God, God got his attention, knocked him off the donkey or whatever he was riding, and he said, Lord, what will you have me to do? You know, straight away he called him Lord. What will you have me to do? And here's a man who was uh, committed to the, the things of God and wanting to live for the the honor of God, the glory of God, like he, he says there in verse 12. He's called us, called you unto his kingdom and glory. And one of the things you see about Paul in verse 4 is that he realized his stewardship. Now, I'll use that word. He, he realized what God had given him, entrusted him with. He says there, we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel. You know, we often talk about trusting God. Did you know that God is trusting you? God has given you a trust. He said, here's the gospel. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, we can't do that as an individual. We have to do it as a church. We send out missionaries. They send out missionaries. They send out, you know, it's like ripples in a pond. Uh, the gospel. God wants us to be faithful. 
Uh, his motive is very important. Did you notice in, in verse 4, he, he said, we're not doing this to please men, but God. And he's the one who tries our hearts. Listen, that's, that's a key in having a, a worthy walk. You have to have the right motive. You need to do it for the Lord. What you do, don't do it for your, well, I don't mean to sound callous here, but don't do it for your family, don't do it for your country, don't do it for your friends. Do it for the Lord. Now, if you'll put God first, you'll be a better family member and community member and better friend and so on. Uh, Paul had a good example of this, this worthy walk. And his method, uh, in uh, verse 5, he didn't use tricks. You know, we don't need to learn some clever method to mess with people, you know, to, to get them to do what we want kind of thing. Uh, Paul said there in verse 5, uh, we didn't use flattering words. Uh, we didn't use a cloak of covetousness. You know, you know, the way a con man cons you is he gets you to covet. Ooh, wow. Oh, that sounds good. I could get a million dollars. I only have to cheat a little. <laughs> and, and then they rob you of a million dollars, you know. And Paul said, I, I didn't use tricks. I didn't use clever sayings and, and, and things. Uh, there's folks around who are using people. Uh, and, and some of it's religion. And, and they don't want you. They want your money. They want your influence. Uh, listen, uh, you need to put God first. And that's, that's the way Paul worked. He, he said, I didn't just give you the gospel. He said, I gave you my, my heart. And folks, I'll guarantee you, you give people your heart, your heart will get hurt. But it's worth it. Jesus' heart got hurt. Jesus wept. You know, he, he looked over at Jerusalem and his heart went out to those people. And folks, that's the way we need to, to be towards others. Not just what they can do for us, but what does God intend for my relationship to be with these people around me? Listen, there's going to be people in your life that are contrary people. It's going to happen. There are going to be people in your community, in your family, in your church. And it doesn't mean you avoid them. It means you learn how to love that contrary person. Listen, it's not fair to only love the people that are easy to love. Man, my wife, she's easy to love. I've got no problem with that. I'll tell you, there's other people I've, you know, we kind of clash, you know. And I've got to be careful that I don't just avoid them. I've got to be careful I don't disrespect them or dishonor them. You know, as Christians, uh, we're not just using people. They're not just there for us. We're there for the Lord. Uh, Paul was a good example of the worthy walk. And, uh, you know, he would... He'd be chained up to somebody and, and witness to him <laughs> as a prisoner. Uh, there was times when he was terribly mistreated, and uh, yet he, he had a heart for the Lord, like Jesus. The other thing you see about the worthy walk in verse 9 from his example is he worked hard. He wasn't a lazy person. He didn't say, oh, I'm an apostle, you better pay me. No, he wasn't a, spo a sponge. You know what I mean when I say a sponge? You know, he wasn't just getting things from people. He was a giver. And verse 10, uh, he was a person who lived a godly life. Uh, he's, he talked about how we behaved ourselves, uh, holy, justly, unblameably. You know, it's important that we behave ourselves as Christians. It's not right as Christians for us just to do whatever we want. We need to do it for the glory of the Lord. He's called you unto his kingdom, his glory. Not mine, not yours. Uh, Paul ministered in uh, in. In verse 11, it says how he exhorted and comforted and, and charged every one of you as a father doth his children. Uh, that's a good example, isn't it? You know, parents have a ministry to their children, don't they? They have a responsibility. They have a, a, a love. Uh, you know, parents do things that, you know, growing up, you never imagine what you're going to do as a parent. Man, you know, there's a... No, I can't go into it, <laughs> but uh, they're just things you do as a parent because you love that kid. You know, you love that child. And uh, what a blessing it is as God gives us that opportunity. Well, he says that's the kind of relationship we need to have as, as Christians. Uh, Paul said that he, uh, uh, he was gentle among them like a, a nurse with her children. Uh, he, he, charged, he exhorted and comforted and charged like a father does his, does his children. There's a relationship we have because we're, we're believers together. And Paul had a high standard. He honored God. He, he served the Lord. That's a worthy walk. 
That's what we're talking about. And it comes back to us, really, doesn't it? That's, that's the whole idea of preaching. You know, we don't need to just know about Paul. What we need to know is, what's my example? What's your example? If someone were writing a book about me, <laughs> if someone were writing a, a description of you, would it be a worthy walk or would it be a careless walk? Uh, do you have a ministry? You know, not, not only are, are you doing a good ministry, do you have a ministry? Don't just be a taker. Be a giver. Now, there's times when we, we need, and, and we should be able to expect to have give and take, but uh, we need to look to be a giver. Don't just watch. Get in the game. You know, don't just be a spectator. Uh, Paul ministered, and in ministering to the church of Thessalonica, he gives them a charge. Did you notice that in, uh, in verse 11? You know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children that you would walk worthy of God. Now, what he's basically saying there is, I've showed you, now you do it. <laughs> it's like parents. Uh, we don't want our kids to be children all their life. You know, we, we see them through the nappies and, you know, all that stuff. We expect them to get out of nappies eventually. <laughs> and, we, you know, we expect them to watch us and do it with us and, and then do it on their own. And we expect them to leave home eventually and start their own home. And, you know, we have a lot of expectations, don't we? And uh, that's, the, that's what he's talking about here. Uh, as a church, you know, he was with them and he ministered to them, but now he says, I charge you. Now you walk worthy. You take the, uh, the ball and run with it. Uh, you do what, what needs to be, to be done. Uh, charge is a, is a strong word. He's basically saying, here's your orders. Here's what you need to do. And he, he, he exhorted them. You know, that's a good thing. Whenever I explain exhort, I always put my arm out. <laughs> Because <laughs> it means to walk, walk beside someone. You know, he exhorted them. He encouraged them. And, and he says he comforted them. This is a good word. Keep this in mind. Y young people, uh, old folks, all of us. It means he spoke calmly. <laughs> we don't have to shout at each other. You know? On occasion we do. You know, Watch out, you know, kind of thing. But uh, we need to speak calmly the truth. And then he charged them. You, you've seen me do it, now, now you do it. And we have a responsibility as Christians to live for our king. There's a verse in Ephesians that puts it this way. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you're called. It's Ephesians 4.1. Do you know what our vocation is? We're a child of the king. If somebody asks, who are you? I'm a child of the king. <laughs> well, it'll startle them. <laughs> what king? The Lord God, King of the earth. And that's important for us to understand. That's who we are. That's our vocation. You know, our, our theme comes from the Lord's, what we call the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. He's the king. Uh, Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You know, don't live for things. Live for the king. Uh, so he says uh, that we need to be faithful uh, the charge is be faithful with the gospel is one of the things. In, in verse 4, uh, we've been put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, uh, but God. God has made us a steward. God is trusting you with really the most important message in, in the world. People need to know the gospel. They need to know about Jesus Christ. It's not nearly as important, well, it's not important that people like us, it's important that they love the Lord. And so many times in relationships, we're worried, oh, will they like me? Will they accept me? Well, the most important thing is, do they, will they love the Lord? Will they accept the Lord? And we need to be careful. We need to be faithful. God has trusted you with that message. And we need to take up the ministry. Uh, Christianity has a ministry not only to the world, but to each other. Listen, we need each other. Uh, we live in a wicked world. Uh, we need the respite that can come when people of, uh, of one heart and one mind gather together and, and encourage each other. Uh, you know, we need that ex exhortation and comfort. And we need the charge, don't we? You know, we need to, is it all right to say G each other up? Uh, you know, we need to g get each other going sometimes. You know, let's go out and door knock. Let's go out and talk to Brother Smith. Or, you know, uh, we need to encourage each other. And we need to, uh, to charge each other with the, the challenge that we have. In, in verse 10, he uses the expression, 
uh, we behaved ourselves among you that believe. It's the last phrase there. He, he prefaces it with how holily and justly and unblameably. The question I would put to you is, how are you behaving among the believers? <laughs> are you among the believers? Yeah, if you're a Christian, you need to be among believers. Um, uh, let me put it this way. A church cannot succeed with only those who attend. A church is not just people who attend. A church is a body. Each person, each part is necessary and ministers to the other parts. So important. Uh, someone put it this way. He said, quit dating the church and get hitched. <laughs> you know, get stuck in there. Uh, get into harness with us. Uh, we need help. Uh, we need to pull together. Uh, be faithful with the gospel. Take up the ministry and keep growing in the Lord. You'll never reach a point in your life where you know it all, where there's nothing else to, to accomplish as a Christian. Not, not till we're with Jesus and like Jesus. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 3, verse 12, just across the page in my Bible. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love, one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. God wants us to keep growing. We don't want to just stay the same. Listen, don't get stuck. Don't go backward. You know, God has a word for that, backsliding. Uh, if you're not as close to the Lord today as you were yesterday, you're, you've backslidden. Uh, we don't want to get stuck. We don't want to go backward. Uh, we want to go forward. That's what a charge has to do with, isn't it? Now, I won't charge up the aisle or anything, but uh, you know, uh, we, we use that word with charge. We want to go forward. And God doesn't just tell you something. He gives you help. And the next few verses that we're going to look at are some of the resources that we have to do what God tells us to do. Verse 13, here's the, here's the first one. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Here's one resource we have. It's unique in all of history, the Word of God. Folks, it's just almost too, too incredible to understand. This is the Word of God. We hold in our hands the Word of God. That's important. <laughs> the King has spoken. And one of the things he says there is it works. God's Word will work. The reason it doesn't work in some people's lives is, number one, they don't receive it. And number two, they don't believe it. You know, they read it. I talk to people all the time who read the Bible, but they don't believe it, <laughs> you know, because faith changes you. Faith without works is dead. If you really believe the Bible, it'll change what you do, what you say, how you live. It's an amazing book. It's a living book. In my notes, I have it as a mathematical formula. Receive plus believe equals effectual. <laughs> That's what he's saying there. The word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Listen, you can put it under your pillow. It won't do anything but get you a, give you a stiff neck. <laughs> That's not how we receive it. You've got to read it and believe it and act on it. It works. I found it interesting. I found it interesting over the years how important God says the Bible is. As a pastor, you get all kinds of, I'll use the word funny, funny things said to you. Um, I was preaching one time and and I've said a few times over the years, you don't need an angel to stand at the end of your bed and tell you what God has said. Well, after the service, guys said, yeah, I had an angel stand at the end of my bed. <laughs> uh, you know, the Bible says that more important than an angel talking to you is God talking to you in the Bible. It's Galatians chapter 1 and verse 8. Though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we preached unto you, let him be accursed. Listen, that angel, the Bible says Satan's an angel of light. The cults are started by angels. Uh, there's, there's plenty of angel talk going on. We don't need angel talk. We need Bible talk. More important than an angel is God's word. We have God's word. Man, we live in a free country. We can carry it around in a hundred different ways. You, know? you can put it on your phone. You can, all kinds of things. It's, there's no excuse. There's another time when uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 you know, I've had people say, oh, you know, if only God would, 
Why didn't God just tell us, you know, what he wants? They mean a voice from heaven. Well, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse, uh, let me start in verse 16. He says, We've not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. They saw Jesus. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the Holy Mount. They saw Jesus. They heard God speak. You think, oh, nothing can top that. Listen to verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. He's saying, this book didn't come because some guy thought he'd write a book. You know, it wasn't Amos's ideas. It wasn't Isaiah's ideas. It's not their private ideas. It's God's. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. You know, you'd think, oh, if God would just speak from heaven, that, that would be important. Well, it might be important, but more important, he says, is the written word of God. Uh, we need to receive it. We need to believe it. He says it'll work. One more. Hebrews chapter 12, and I won't go into detail in this, but it, it's an account where he talks about God giving the law on Mount Sinai. And, and he says, let, let me just read you some of the verses to give you a flavor of it. Uh, Hebrews 12, verse 18 for ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they heard. When, when God came to Mount Sinai and gave, gave him the law, man, it was, it was scary. It got dark and the noise and thunder and all kinds of things going on. Uh, verse 21, so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceeding fear and quake. More important than, uh, than God's voice from heaven, more important than an angel standing, uh, more important than the giving of the law is God's word. Now, the law is part of God's word. No, no, don't misunderstand me there. Uh, verse uh, 28, he says, Wherefore we, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. God has spoken. And God has recorded it. And God has preserved it. It's amazing that we still have the same Bible that we've had for a thousand years, two thousand years. And before that with the Old Testament. God has not only given it, he's preserved his word. Uh, that's one of your resources. That's just one <laughs> that we have. And what a blessing it is that God can speak to us day by day, intimately, moment by moment. And we can, we can memorize it, we can meditate on it, uh, and we can believe it and act upon it. Uh, what you hold in your hand is the Word of God. You need to understand that. Receive it, believe it. It'll change your life. The second thing he talks about there in, in Thessalonians, uh, chapter 2, verse 14. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. I'll just stop reading there for the moment. God has given you your church. Now, you have God's word within you. You have God's people around you in your church. Uh, you need to value your church. You need to have a church, but you need to value your church. God's people that you fellowship with, that you've committed your influence to. You've said, I I'm, a, I'm a part of these people. You became followers of, of, the, of the churches of God. Now, he says, there will be those who will oppose you. Let's continue on. For you also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us. They please not God and are, and are contrary to all men. There's people who will oppose your church, who will oppose God and, and the Word of God. Uh, you know, there's lots of philosophy that, that says, oh, the, the problem is Christianity. And uh, verse 16, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles and, and so on. Verse 17, but we brethren being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, 
endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. He had a great desire to be a part of that church, to, to be a, able to be a, a blessing and, and for them to be a, a blessing to him. Uh, there are those who will oppose God's work and God's church, but there's those who will follow it. You have to choose your crowd. You have to decide which one you are. You're going to oppose it, or you're going to endeavor to, to be a part of it. Uh, I, I want to be, like verse 10, he said, uh, among you that believe. Among you that believe. I mentioned to one of our, our members, they're, they're traveling this week, and uh, I said, uh, I hope you have a, a great experience going to church where you are. You know, when you're traveling, that's not your church, but listen, uh, we should be in church. Right. It's like, I, I think this is a true illustration. I heard of a lady who was, was deaf and, and blind, but she went to church. And people communicated with her somehow, you know, why, why do you go to church? She said, I want people to know whose side I'm on. <laughs> you, you can't hear, you can't see. I want people to know whose side I'm on. Listen, we need to be a part of God's people. That's right. uh, it's not just for our benefit, although there'll be benefit. Uh, but it's also for them, and it's for the glory of the Lord. He's called you unto His kingdom and His glory. Uh, we have God's word within us. We have God's people around us. And then thirdly, we have God's glory before us. That's why we do it. Let me read verse 17 and, and to the end of the chapter. For we, but we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope or joy or crown or rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ as his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. In that relation, we, relationship that we have is because of the Lord. You know, we're not all here because we all have uh, you know, AB blood or you know, something like that. Uh, we're not all here because we're all from the Philippines or from the United States or all have brown hair or have hair. Uh, you know, uh, we're here because of the Lord, aren't we? That's what ties us together. Um, God's glory before us. We serve the Lord. He's our king. And he says, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. You know, God wants us to be salt and light to the world, but God wants us to minister to each other as well. There's a relationship that we have, fellowshipping and, and ministering to Christians. Paul was able to say to them, ye are our glory and joy. Now, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, could we say that of each other? I think we could. Yeah, there should be a, a relationship that, that is precious and, and more than just a casual one. Uh, Romans 15, 7, he said, Wherefore receive ye one another as Christ also received us, to the glory of God. We need to receive each other. In uh, verse 12 uh, of our passage, that ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. Uh, we need to have a worthy walk. And part of that is our relationship as, as believers. Are you faithful in fellowship? Now, well, obviously you're here this morning. Are you faithful? Are you faithfully sharing the gospel? You know, that's important. But you know that starts, let me ask you this question, have you received the gospel? What a shame it would be to share the gospel with others and never receive it yourself. Uh, I've heard of people like that. The entrance to God's kingdom is to be born again. God says we can't see, we can't enter the kingdom of God unless we're, we're born again. Now, the world kind of tries to mock that expression, but boy, it's a good one. You know, we're not going to get to heaven by physical things, we're going to get to heaven by spiritual things, by the, the life of the, the Spirit of God. Uh, you must be born again, Jesus said. Uh, the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And without Jesus, without the new birth, we fall short. Now, you might be better than me or I might be better than you, but listen, without Jesus, we all fall short of the glory of God. The comparison's not each other, it's the Lord. It's God's holy standard. All of sin. And God has a solution for that. It's like, a, I love how Henry Brandt puts it. He said, man, if it's a sin problem, that's good. God has a solution for that. <laughs> it's true. Even though sin separates us from God, God was manifest in the flesh. 
God became that, the door, the bridge, the way uh, for us to come to God. Jesus Himself. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. What a blessing. He says the wages of sin is death. Yeah, that's the physical. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Aren't you glad that God has made a way, that God is the way? We need to believe that Jesus died for, for our sins. You need to believe that Jesus died for your sins. Uh, Dola was sharing an illustration with me the other day of, uh, of a woman who'd been a, a Christian from a very early age. And she, as an adult, she had to stop and remember that Jesus is her Savior. Yeah, she'd never been in sin. She'd never been in the world. She trusted Christ as a child. But you know, even when we get saved at six years old, He's still our Savior. He's still our Savior. Jesus died for your sins. He rose in uh, victory over sin and death. And the Bible puts it this way in Romans chapter 10. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And God just says, believe and ask. Uh, you know, that, that formula applies to salvation. Receive and believe e equals effectual. <laughs> and it'll work. God's uh, way of salvation will work. God will see you through the difficulties of life. God will see you through what you're going through today. Uh, we can trust Him. And, uh, you know, as His children, as servants of the King, yes, to the world, we need to be salt and light. But to each other, uh, we need to have that fellowship. We need to have that love and, and commitment to, uh, to God's work here. And I uh, encourage you to be a part of that. We're going to take our, our song books this morning and go to page 167. It's the old uh, invitation song, Just As I Am Without One Plea. I don't know, you, you might need to come for salvation. I'll be down here at the front. If, if that's your need, listen, just give me your hand. Say, Pastor, I need to be saved. And we'll have somebody show you from the Bible. Uh, privately, quietly. Uh, won't make you say or do anything you don't want to. Uh, but listen, today is the day of salvation. Maybe you need to come and pray. Maybe you're saved and never been scripturally baptized or what, whatever your need might be this morning. Uh, let's stand together, page 